This is a 2017 Ford F-150 Platinum, and it has a sticker price of $77,000. With taxes where I live, that would come to $83,160, but there are some deals and incentives on this truck, so let's call it eighty grand. Eighty grand for a truck. Today, I'm going to show you around this thing and show you what you get when you spend $80,000 on a pickup. First, a little history. Now, back in the 1950s and 1960s, pickup trucks were a little more than bare bones work vehicles designed for farmers to haul chickens to the market. Things started to change in the 1980s when people started to use trucks for fun. They would lift them and they'd add light bars on top for style. In the late 1990s, the luxury trucks started to appear, first with trim levels like the Ford F-150 Lariat and the GMC Sierra C3, which later became the Sierra Denali. A couple of automakers took it too far, putting luxury trucks with their luxury brands. The Cadillac Escalade EXT lasted for 12 years. The Lincoln Blackwood lasted for only two. But while luxury brand trucks didn't make it, the luxury truck has survived. And that brings us to today where there's a luxury version of every single pickup truck. Now, this is the latest Ford Super Duty and I've borrowed it from Hoffman Ford here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where they have about 20 Super Duties on their lot, half of which are luxury trim levels. And listen to this, while the base price of a new F250 is just $33,000, the average asking price on Auto Trader for a brand new F250 is $54,600 hundred dollars, meaning that very few base trucks are sold and most of these things come out of the factory loaded with a lot of features and a lot of options. And this one is maybe the most loaded of them all. This is the Ford F-250 Platinum, and Platinum is the top-end trim level of the Super Duty pickup lineup. And yes, the window sticker is $77,000 or $83,000 after taxes. Today, I'm going to take you on a tour of this thing, and I'm going to show you all of the cool quirks and the cool features you get when you spend eighty grand on a pickup truck. And then I'm going to drive it and give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the $80,000 pickup truck, click the link below to go to autotrader.com slash oversteer. Now, I'm going to start with this truck's biggest quirk, or maybe depending on your perspective, its biggest feature, and that would be its size. This truck is 266.2 inches long. That's 22.2 feet. Or put another way, I could park a Toyota Camry next to this truck. I could lie down behind the Camry and the truck would still be longer. This truck has a 177 inch wheelbase. That's the distance between the center of its wheels. In other words, you could park an entire Ford Focus in the wheelbase of this pickup. And its physical size isn't the only gargantuan thing about this truck. The next massive thing in this truck is under the hood. That would be the engine, which is so high off the ground, my tripod doesn't even go high enough for me to be able to show it to you. This is a 6.7 liter turbo diesel V8. It makes 440 horsepower. That's pretty good. And 925 pound feet of torque. That's amazing. In fact, this engine is such a beast that it allows this truck to tow up to 18,000 pounds. In other words, this truck can tow three of itself, and that's no small feat because I just showed you how big this thing is. Or, put another way, this truck can tow an elephant, and a hippo, and a Lotus Elise at the same time. And it's not just the body and the engine in this truck that's enlarged. Everything about this truck is bigger and more massive than in a normal car. For example, in your car, you have five lug nuts, or maybe four if you drive a crappy 93 Honda Civic. This thing has eight. And why does a truck need eight lug nuts? Because screw you, that's why. And since we're talking about the wheels, one other crazy, massive, oversized thing in this truck, check this out. I can get my head in the wheel well. Now I drive a lot of exotic cars and usually you can't even get a finger in the wheel well, let alone a hand, but in this thing, I can get my entire head under here and it's really not all that difficult. In fact, this would be a nice place to take shelter in a storm. Hmm. Next, we gotta talk about the mirrors, which are quite large, not just large, but but huge, not just huge, but radically, insanely massive. How massive? 
This is my laptop. It is a regular MacBook Pro, not a MacBook Air, or a MacBook Blue Sky Sunshine, or whatever they came out with this week. It is a regular laptop size laptop. Put it next to the mirror and look at this. This mirror and this laptop are virtually the same size. You won't see that in your normal car. And of course, those aren't the only gargantuan things. Next, I move up to the headlights, which as you can see, are larger than my head. In fact, it isn't even really close. My head doesn't even come close to the size of the headlights on an F-250. And then we move on to the back seats. And yes, that is a giant sunroof you see up there. I'll get to that in a minute, but first let's talk about the back seats. Now, when you get in the back of your four-door car, you probably have to sit upright, maybe tuck your knees in a little so your knees don't hit the back of the front seat. Well, in this car, you just basically make yourself at home. You can just lie down in the back seat of a pickup truck. I can lie down like I'm being chauffeured in a limo. And the front seat is in a normal spot where a normal person could sit, not some crazy far up spot. This is how much room is in the back. And of course, if you're making everything else huge, you also have to make the manufacturer's emblem huge so people know just who made that huge truck. In this case, take a look at the logo and take a look at the license plate and compare them. A US license plate is 12 inches wide. This logo is wider. In fact, this logo with all of its silver accoutrement is 14 inches wide. This front emblem in this truck is only one inch shy of having the same diameter as the wheels on the original Acura NSX. Seriously. Next up, last thing on this truck's massive size, and then I'll move on to the rest of the quirks, but I gotta talk about this one. Now, you know how in your car you put the sun visor down to shield yourself from the sun? That's pretty normal. And you can also move the sun visor to the side in case the sun is on the side. That's all pretty normal, nothing special here. But this truck's front door and side window are so gargantuanly massive that Ford has allowed you to move this visor along a track because it can't cover the entire space of this window. Next up, time to move on to the other quirks, starting with the tailgate. Now, I've been around trucks my entire life, and in the past, the tailgate was something you just threw open, you threw whatever you needed to in the bed, you didn't care if anything got scratched, you didn't worry about it. In this truck, things are a little different. The tailgate in this truck can be opened by pressing the key fob. Push it twice. <laughs> That's right, there is a power tailgate. Now, a lot of times you wanna get in the back of a truck and a bed and throw some stuff around, rearrange things, and these trucks have gotten so big, you can't easily do that anymore, especially if you're older, but Ford has a solution. Push this little thing at the top of the bed, and then a step comes out. So you can step up and get into your tailgate. But even this, let's be honest, is a little bit precarious. You're stepping, you're not really sure, so, there's a railing. Grab the railing, step on the step, and you're easily in the bed of your F-250. You want to get out? Grab the railing, step on the step, and you're out. A power tailgate and a bed step with a railing. If you needed any more proof trucks have come a long way, here it is. Another thing I like about this truck is the rear window, which is the coolest rear window in the pickup world today. You can open or close it by pushing a little button above the driver's head on the overhead center console, and when it's closed, look at that, it just looks like a floating rear window. There's no stupid lines like on every other pickup truck. For some reason, I think that looks really, really cool, regardless whether you have it open or closed, or just half open. Next, we move on to the finest feature of any Ford vehicle, reason alone to buy a Ford product, and that would be the exterior keypad, which is something that no other automaker has for reasons that are beyond me. Here's how this works. Let's say you wanna go swimming or hiking or fencing. I don't care what you do in your spare time, but either way, you don't wanna have your bulky keys with you, so you wanna lock them inside the car. Well, in every other car, you can't do that, but in this truck, just hide your keys somewhere in the interior, then type your little code into the keypad, you get the code when you buy the truck, and then go off and do whatever it is that you want to do. When you're done, just come back, type the code back into the keypad, and then the door unlocks. Fish your keys out of the hiding place, and then you can drive away, and you don't need to have your keys with you at all times, which can be very useful. In fact, so useful that every vehicle should have this feature, but for some reason, only most Ford vehicles have it. Now, I love that Ford keypad, but I've always been confused by one thing about it. Specifically, it has 
10 numbers, zero through nine, but it only has five buttons. Each button has two numbers on it. So if your code is 1357, isn't it also 2468? And also 1458 and various other things too? I don't know why they didn't just go with five buttons and five numbers. That seems like it would make a lot more sense. Next up, we gotta talk about the window line. Now you'll notice in a lot of heavy duty pickup trucks that the window line on the front door sort of starts up here and then it curves down and finishes flat in the front. So it has basically two different elevations. Now over the years, I've heard a lot of people say, well, that's because you rest your hand there and then it's just a nice comfortable position but that's not why they do it. They do it because the mirror in this truck is so gargantuanly huge that if they don't curve the top of the door panel, you won't be able to see the mirror and you certainly wouldn't be able to see it on the passenger side. So they have to curve it to give you extra visibility so you can see your laptop sized side view mirror. And speaking of the mirrors, there's a lot to cover on the mirrors. So what am I gonna talk about next? The fact that it says Ford on the mirror and nice chrome trim. No, how about the fact that there are mirror lights? Push a little button to the left of the steering wheel and you can turn on a light that lights up the side of the car so that you can see, I don't know, the ground, if there are any woodland creatures trying to attack you, maybe your parking space if it's late at night. Press the button again and the light turns off. Next up, moving on to the F-250's interior quirks, starting with one of my favorites, that would be interior storage. Now, whenever I drive sports cars or exotics, I'm always complaining they don't have enough interior storage. Well, this thing is the exact opposite. On the inside of the door panel, you have a nice little storage pocket. Also, to your right, you have a nice little storage pocket. On the center console itself, there is a storage pocket in the front. There's more storage in the middle. There are two cup holders to the side of that storage. And if you lift up the little plastic bit in the storage in the middle, you have even more storage. Open the center console and you'll find that the storage area is absolutely massive. You can fit in there whatever you want and there are nice little cutouts for pens so that you always know where they are. And behind the center console, there are two more cup holders for a total of four. Of course, there's more storage over on the passenger side than there are the glove boxes. That's right the glove boxes. There are two, one on the top where the Super Duty logo is, and then another larger one on the bottom. If you can't find a place to put something in this vehicle's interior, well, then there's no place for it, except maybe the bed. Next up, we gotta talk about the gauge cluster or the driver information center, as Ford calls it. It's a screen in the middle of the speedometer and the tachometer and is loaded with so much more information than you would ever possibly find interesting. I found a couple of things especially interesting. Number one, this truck has a turbo boost gauge and it's set to fault to display at all times. So you can always see how much PSI you're running in your super duty. Another interesting item inside the driver information center, how about the off-road incline meter, which shows exactly what slope the truck is on from various different angles. That's a lot better than having some sort of aftermarket gauge. This is built right in and you can see it at any time. And then there's the fuel economy display. Now, one of the most interesting things about heavy duty pickups is they are so big and heavy and large that the federal government does not rate them for fuel efficiency. So the largest vehicles on the road are exempt from the government checking out their gas mileage. Now, when I was a kid and I grew up and I saw that, I thought it was ridiculous. And I assumed these things always got six miles per gallon because no one was paying attention. But as you can see in the driver information center, this truck keeps track of its own fuel economy and it's actually pretty good. This particular truck is a demonstrator unit, which means it's racked up a few thousand miles already. And that also means that that fuel economy number comes from more than just a couple of test drives. And it is really not all that bad for a vehicle that can pull an elephant and a hippo and a Lotus Elise. All right, so at this point, you're probably thinking, I get it, the truck is huge and that gives it a few quirks and it's a pickup, so it has a few interesting pickup quirks, but what about all those luxury features, the stuff that brings this thing price tag all the way up to 76,000, whatever? Well, I'll get to those now, starting with the remote starter. Press a button on this truck's key fob, actually press it twice and... <laughs> Okay, so now you've remote started your truck, or at least you've unlocked it. Now it's time to climb in, but that's some pretty substantial ground clearance to get over. So when you open the door, keep your eye down there. That's right, the running board extends so you can just step on it and climb right in. And when you shut the door, yep, that's right, the running board retracts back into the body so it doesn't catch on anything if you take this truck off-roading. 
For another interesting luxury feature, we have to go back to the mirrors. Yes, they light up. Yes, they say forward on them. They also retract automatically. Now in your car, you can fold them in automatically, perhaps if you have a nice car. That's not what these do. These actually go in and out automatically so that you have a greater vantage point behind you in case you're towing a trailer. If you're not towing the trailer, put them back in and then you can see just to the end of the truck. It's genius and God forbid you should have to just push the mirrors yourself. And speaking of visibility, as you can imagine, driving this vehicle is rather difficult because as I've already told you, it is massively gargantuanly huge, but Ford has taken some steps to address that, starting with the giant mirrors, which help, but that's not all. There's also a backup camera, of course, and a 360 degree top-down overhead view camera, which actually makes tight spaces pretty easy despite this thing's huge size. I'm especially impressed by that 360 camera because a lot of luxury cars don't have this feature yet. Porsches don't have it, a lot of Land Rovers don't have it, and yet here it is in a Ford pickup. But speaking of screens, I'm getting ahead of myself here because my favorite screen of all happens when you get in the truck to start it. Now this truck doesn't have a little key like a plebeian cheap truck. Instead, it's got a starter button like a luxury vehicle. You push the starter button and it doesn't start right away. Instead, it tells you to wait. But while you're waiting, it plays a nice little built Ford Tough movie. So you have something to do. Next up, we move on to the seats in this truck. Of course, this truck has leather upholstery, but it doesn't stop there. This truck also has heated front seats. And it doesn't stop there. This truck also has cooled front seats. And it doesn't stop there. This truck also has heated rear seats. And it doesn't stop there because this truck also has massaging seats. I'm serious. Go into a little menu in the infotainment system and you can turn on the seat massagers in a pickup so you can drive down the road getting a massage while you're pulling a horse trailer on the highway. And finally, yes, this truck has a panoramic sunroof. I never thought I'd live to see the day where a pickup had a panoramic sunroof, but it does. There's one panel of glass above the driver's seat and the passenger seat, and there's one panel above the rear seats. Now, interestingly, if you go to open the front sunroof, which does open, you'll find that it opens a little bit differently than the front sunroof in most cars with panoramic sunroofs. Unlike most cars where the front sunroof opens over the rear sunroof, in this truck, the front sunroof opens under the rear sunroof inside the truck, so it robs a little headroom from rear seat passengers. Not that they need any more space back there. Of course, if you want the sunroof completely gone, you can always close the sunshade. Push a little button next to the driver's head on the overhead center console, and the sunshade whirs closed all the way from the rear sunroof to the front sunroof, so it can completely block out your panoramic roof if you don't want the sun. So those are all the crazy quirks and the cool features of the $80,000 pickup, the Ford F-250 Platinum. Now it's time to get this thing out on the road and find out what it's like to drive a vehicle that's approximately the same size as Indianapolis. So I mean, the first thing that you realize when you, when you sit inside this thing is it's absolutely massive. Um, you know, I'm behind a Cavalier and I feel like I could just run over. I mean, it really feels, to someone who's used to driving cars and even smaller SUVs, this really feels like a monster truck. Everything is just enormous. I mean, I look at those mirrors and I was making fun of how big they were a second ago, but now it's like, well, <laughs> they're useful. I can see that the entire gargantuan length of this truck. I just can't believe this thing is so big. And, and just a note for Europeans watching, I know I got a lot of viewers in India and Asia, uh, this is not an uncommon vehicle to be driven on American roads. So you see super duty, heavy duty pickups fairly often. If you're in the city, it's pretty rare, but if you're anywhere else, the suburbs, the country, uh, you see them at least a few times a day and maybe 20, 30 times a day. They're, they're pretty common. It's just, you just feel like you're above. I mean, there's a Honda Pilot and I can see his roof. I got the sunroof, must be an EX. I mean, that's, that's, you, you just have this commanding position. And it's not just you have this, and there's a, there's a Chevy 1500 pickup, light duty, and it looks like a child's toy compared to what I'm sitting in. If you drive these things often, and especially if you tow with them, you're just used to it, and it's just like, well, whatever, that's, that's my truck. But to me, and I think to most people, uh, it's, it's a, just a completely crazy experience. One really interesting thing I've noticed in the course of filming this is just how quiet it is. You know, it used to be that diesels were so loud and you just wanted to die and you were around one and nobody wanted to buy one for that reason. They were just so loud and obnoxious and you could tell when you were next to a diesel to stoplight. And commercial vehicles are still that way, school bus and that sort of thing. But this, this doesn't feel, it, it's a little bit uh, louder than a gas car and it's especially louder when you're at floor, when you're accelerating, you can hear it. But at idle, it's like barely louder. And that's kind of an impressive 
thing. A lot of people buy these to tow, but also as you get out of the city where I live and you get sort of into more rural areas, you get into a situation where big trucks like this are a status symbol and especially like luxury, tree, you know, the Platinum or the King Ranch or whatever. And it's almost like people who have sports cars or S-classes in town and they never use half the features and they never use the giant back seats. When you get out to the country, there's a lot of people who buy these just to have the big status symbol. You know, I made it in life and I got a, I got a big pickup. And I gotta admit, as I'm sitting here, <laughs> with the massaging seat going and the cooled seat I can turn on and all this soft leather, I do kind of feel like I've made it in life. <laughs> of course the ride is tremendously smooth. It's so nice to finally drive a vehicle for a video where I'm not wincing every time I go over a bump. I always tell people, don't get a Super Duty unless you need it. If you need a Super Duty, then go for it and you need the towing or the hauling. And of course some people are like, oh, I just want it, it's cool. Well, yeah, okay, it's cool until you have to go into a parking garage. All right, we gotta give it at least one good acceleration run here. Let's make sure the police aren't around. All right, here we go. Let's be quick. <laughs> wow, boy, there's 60. <laughs> yeah, it moves pretty fast. The problem, there's there's two problems though. Number one is you actually don't hear all that much when it moves. You know, Redline is 4,000, so it never really gets, you know, like a, like a sports car. It never really gets high in the rev range. But also you're just so removed from the road that you don't really notice the speed like something else. I wouldn't be surprised if this thing does zero to 60 in six point something or low sevens or something like that. But you just don't, you're so away from it. You just, you barely feel it. One of the interesting things about the interior in this truck is the interior is not all that nice. It, it doesn't have super high-end leather and high-end materials and there's a reason for that. Uh, if you're actually using this as a work truck, you don't want any of that crap because you'll get it wet, you'll get it dirty. So it, instead of being having nice stuff, it has durable stuff that's, that's gonna last and sort of uh, hold up for a long time. It also, everything is sort of large in this truck. All the buttons are huge, and I've always been told that's because the theory is you can use them with gloves if you want to. If I was out here, this is the ultimate. It has everything. It's so practical. You can put stuff anywhere in this thing. It has power outlets everywhere, regular household power outlets. Um, and it can tow anything, and it can haul anything, and it can seat people. Like, what else do you need? Um, if you live in a compact area, you need something a little smaller. But if you don't, it's like, screw it. I'm gonna do this because this is the ultimate. It has literally every possible thing. So that's the 2017 Ford F250 Platinum Super Duty the $80,000 pickup truck. Of course, I say the $80,000 pickup truck, but really rivals from General Motors and from Chrysler with the Ram cost just as much and they're heavy duty guys and a similar trim level. I just chose this one because this is the most newly redesigned heavy duty pickup and I wanted to check it out. Indeed, for the money you spend on this, you could buy easily a certified pre-owned Porsche 911. But if you did that, you wouldn't be able to tow that elephant hippo Lotus Elise combo. Anyway, now it's time for the Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, this truck is about function rather than beauty, and it certainly won't get any award for its attractiveness, including for me, it gets a four out of 10. Next up is acceleration, and indeed it does zero to 60 in something like 6.9 seconds, which is amazing for a giant pickup truck, but not for the Doug score, and it gets a two out of 10. Next up is handling, and the Super Duty is as far from precise and sharp as you can get. It's laughably vague and slow and over assist but it isn't dangerous, so it stops short of a 1 and gets a 2 out of 10. As for cool factor, it depends on who you are and where you are, but to me, these aren't especially cool, since I don't live out in the country, and they're not especially uncool, since I'm not an environmental protester, so it gets an average score, 5 out of 10. Importance, however, is low. In 10 years, this gleaming $80,000 pickup will be a beat-up workhorse and will be on to the next generation version, so it gets a 2 out of 10. That brings the weekend score to a mere 15 out of 50, which is among the lowest scores yet, but let's be honest, this isn't exactly a thrilling weekend ride. Next up, onto the daily category, starting with features, the F-250 is loaded. It has a lot of cool stuff, especially for a pickup, missing only some of the top new autonomous driving features and it gets an 8 out of 10. Comfort 2 is excellent. It doesn't quite insulate you like a Rolls Royce or a Bentley, but it comes closer than you might expect and it gets an 8 out of 10. Quality is good, but not great. The materials are average, though these are known to be reliable workhorses, so it gets a 7 out of 10. 
Practicality is the next category, and it would be off the charts high if it wasn't for one little problem. If you drive this truck into the city, you can't drive, turn, park, or even cruise along without taking up multiple lanes. For many people, it's an easy 10. For me in the city, it's much lower, but I'll compromise and give it an 8 out of 10. Finally, value. Again, it depends what you're using it for, but $80,000 is just too much for a truck, any truck, especially when you can get a good practical Super Duty for a lot cheaper if you compromise on the chrome and all the fixins, it gets a 6 out of 10, bringing the total daily score to 37 out of 50, very near the top, but not number one. Add it all up and the total Doug score is 52 out of 100. This truck is the exact opposite of the Ferrari Boxer I showed you on Monday. It's great for daily use and abysmal for fun driving, but still just as interesting to watch on YouTube. Maybe that's why they call them headlights, because they will swallow your head. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Key fob, actually press it twice, and... Key fob, actually press it twice, and... <laughs> How? Is it only when the camera's off? It's key fob, actually press it twice, and... I did too fast that time.